Jen Coulter is the uh, best-selling author. Her latest book was a huge bestseller, but apparently a lot of Democrats have not read it yet. It's called Resistance is Futile. Why do they keep trying? Great book, Resistance is Futile. Also, her book, Adios America, is the best one ever on the border crisis. You can go to AnnCoulter.com. You can get her books, her column. Follow Ann Coulter on Twitter, of course, and Facebook and Instagram. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Um, fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Incidentally, Adios America isn't just the border crisis. It's about legal immigration. Well, yes, but uh, immigration, of course, the big issue. And I think the best book on the subject, if you want. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, hey, <laughs> but uh, I assume you want to talk about Cohen. Well, there was a bombshell in his testimony because these uh, Democrats spent months telling us no one is closer to Trump than Cohen and that he's the go-between between Moscow and uh, Trump. Well, he testified. He just said under oath, I saw no evidence of Russian collusion. So isn't that it? Case closed? <laughs> they just, this Russian collusion thing, <laughs> it's as if they're trying to convince us the world is flat. Not only that, the, part of his big showstopper evidence was that um, he overheard Roger Stone calling calling Trump and saying he was trying to get through to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks had something coming. Um, the obvious point of which, if, if anyone in the campaign, particularly the president himself, huh, wow, wonder what WikiLeaks has. What do they have? Um, obviously, they did not have a direct line to Russian intelligence. Yes. <laughs> you don't call up WikiLeaks hoping for, <laughs> hoping for scraps from the table. And, you know, one other thing that... Uh, it's kind of important, these Elliot Nesses on the Democrat side um, <laughs> trying to enforce um, the most preposterous or act like, you know, this is, this is an impeachable crime, a campaign finance violation, which, as you will see in, in resistance, is futile. It's, it's absolutely absurd, their argument. Um, they have to prove that Trump knew, knew, you know, with his fine legal mind and attention to, <laughs> to detail that um, it, it would be um, a campaign vi- finance violation to pay, um, pay hush money. Paying hush money isn't a crime, of course. Um, they're claiming this is a reporting violation, but also that the only, to make it a campaign vi- violation, the crucial, I think, the heart of the matter is that the only reason he would pay that money um, was to con the voters into thinking he was a man of great moral rectitude. Um, <laughs> which I believe was not really his, his, his profile. <laughs> that wasn't why people voted for him. Um, and not because, you know, he didn't want Melania to know. He didn't want his grandkids to know. He thought it would hurt his brand. Um, there's absolutely no way this could possibly be a campaign finance violation. That's all you're going to hear about from these lunatics for the next week. But meanwhile, um, while, while, while they want, you know, this, this ridiculous a jaywalking charge would be more impressive. Um, this ridiculous campaign finance violation treated like, um, you know, which, well, it's the law. It's the law. Um, uh, basically, all of Cohen's testimony is a violation of a rather sacred legal privilege, the attorney-client privilege. Yeah. I mean, I really am I'm stunned that no one's mentioning that. I mean, their argument is, um, well, there's a crime, fr- I assume, there's a crime fraud exception. Yeah, except there was no crime. Um, and their only evidence of the crime is, is Cohen breaching the attorney-client privilege to call it a crime. Yeah. But on the other hand, he wasn't really Donald Trump's lawyer. Donald Trump had great lawyers, top lawyers. That, And then nobody's ever asked him, you know, uh, he's a very litigious guy. How come every time he sued, every time he took a legal action, you were never the lawyer on it? Nobody's ever asked him that. Well, I must say, I hope you're right about that. Because watching this guy, I don't know if you, if you've had this, had this feeling come over you when, um, Pursuing our favorite hop, hobby, watching MSNBC. Whenever I see that snarling, spitting, and <laughs> not particularly bright Steve Schmidt, I think even less of John McCain. And, and that wasn't a high bar to begin with. I do kind of look at Michael Cohen and think, what on earth was Trump doing employing this guy? Well, because all billionaires have a guy like this. Because when you got to pay off the mistress or the porn star, you don't bring in Mark Kazowitz. You don't bring in the top lawyers on this. You give it to this guy to handle. You know, you know Trump isn't my favorite person right now. No, really? Um, 
<laughs> but, <You're kidding. laughs> but I'm sorry, I don't believe the Stormy Daniel story. He did. <laughs> she's claiming she had sex with him one time. That's that's the big affair, and the, and Playboy Bunny claims it was a few more times than that. Um, and yet, um, those. Um, <laughs> Um, he was a very famous man and a very rich man. Neither of them have one scintilla of piece of evidence. Nothing at all. Nothing. Well, um... not, a link, not a phone message, not a text, um, not a spoon um, from the coffee with his DNA on it. Not a speck of evidence. Give me a break, Mark Simone. I could date someone once and, and produce proof. Oh, yeah. Well, more about that later. But um, <laughs> uh, the Stormy Daniels thing to a lot of people, they said, "Ooh, it's so seedy. But this looks like the Duke and Duchess of Windsor now compared to Bob Kraft with his strip mall drive through uh, <laughs> massage parlor. Yes. Uh, yes. What, what, uh, hey, there's uh, 200 names on this list in Palm Beach coming out. Uh, you think we'll recognize 50 of them? No, I don't. We'll recognize a few names like... Bob Kraft and maybe Harvey Weinstein, but no, no, I don't think any of any of any of my friends in in Palm Beach are going to show up on any of these of these lists. Um, it would be nice. I mean, it, one interesting thing I may may write about this next week. Obviously, I think I'll write. It. Oh, oh, when did I write my column for tonight? Um, it's on the Cohen testimony. Yes, I wrote it yesterday. And how could I do that? Yeah. Because their arguments have not changed. At, for, there was a brief fleeting moment last night before they printed um, his testimony where I thought, oh my gosh, what if I'm wrong and this isn't all going to be what I, think it's, what, he's, what I think he's going to say. And then I remembered, no, I've been watching this coverage for two years. They have not come up with a new argument. There is nothing new about Trump. We just have to hear the same things over and over and over again. But um, I may be thinking, I may, I may write about the, the Jeffrey Epstein case soon, something um, conservatives were pushing at the time, Epstein, big Democratic donor, being defended by Alan Dershowitz, um, flying Bill Clinton around on his plane. Um, now, now the left has, has suddenly decided that, that, <laughs> that the only interesting fact about Jeffrey Epstein, oh, pederast, in case you're, you're unfamiliar with the case, pederast given a slap the, on the wrist by the Democratic DA, is now um, the sole attribute of interest was that he was, before this story broke, a member of Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, hey, I go, I go back to the bombshell that Cohen testified to, because they all have been telling you no one's closer to Trump, and he was the go-between between Moscow and Trump. He has testified today under oath he saw no evidence of collusion. You think Rachel Maddow said, wow, get that clip. We're going to run that in the opening tonight. <laughs> You'll never no, hear that quoted. Though I did know... <laughs> I, I had, when I was explaining to one of my friends before the testimony came out last night, what I just told you that, um, oh my gosh, what if he does have something all new and I'm flying today? I don't have time to write a new column. I've already drafted what I'm going to say about his testimony because I know what he's going to say. Um, so I had that moment of fear. And then I said to my friend who isn't sick like you and I are and doesn't watch MSNBC obsessively, um, and told him, no, 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 I, I know it's going to be the same thing. I know it's going to be the same thing. I, it's, it's the same thing every night. Um, it's not, it's not the, 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 the end. It's, it's the beginning of the end. That's a big one. It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> Trump's worst week ever. Um, <laughs> what, what's the other big one they use all the time? Well, anyway, bombshell. We're, we're still talking. I glanced at the TV and I said, guess what the Chiron is? The big sign on, on, on Rachel Maddow. It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> well, yeah, bombshell testament. So this guy's just basically the Michael Wolf of 2019. No, it's worse than that. I mean, Wolf had a really fun book, and I think most of it was true. I guess the most important point about this, and I think Republicans, as usual, are being are just, it's amazing we win anything with these <laughs> guys. Um, but, you know, the big, the big thing, Mark Meadows, or, or no, not Mark Meadows, I forget who it was, somebody asking him, um, isn't this because, um, oh, are you working in the White House? Oh, well, you didn't get a job in the White House. Um, number one, I don't think anyone after the last two years thinks that working in the Trump White House is some sort of Xanadu. <laughs> um, point two, you know, come on, we know what's going on here. Cohen was caught um, dead to rights 
on a slew of serious felonies, bank fraud, fraud, cheating the IRS, big fat felonies that are going to land him in prison. The prosecutors could get him to, to testify that he was a Martian. He's doing this as part of his plea bargain. That, that's that's what, what is interesting about this. Not that, oh, you didn't get to work in the White House. Oh, that's so retarded. <laughs> wow. I hate to say we're out of time, but everybody get Ann Coulter's book. The latest one is her best, Resistance is Futile. You can get the new column. Go to AnnCoulter.com. Follow her on Twitter. But just go to AnnCoulter.com. You can see everything there. And follow her on Facebook and Instagram. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.